Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the part two of the user guide of the appointment scheduling module. Uh, in the earlier video, we had covered how to create and edit services. Uh, in this video, we will look at how to create and edit appointments against those services. So let's begin. So we'll be talking about how to create and edit appointments across various views, the list view and the calendar view. We'll also take a look at how appointments are visible across these views uh, and how to filter these appointments. So here I am on the app. I've logged in and I'm accessing the appointment scheduling app. So uh, by default, we land on the summary view. Uh, this is called as the weekly summary view. I will be covering and talking about it in a while. Um, let's first look at the uh, other tab, which is the appointments list tab. Here I have two different views, the list view and the calendar view. Let's first take a look at the list view. So the list view, as the name suggests, is a basically a view which will provide you a list of the appointments that have been booked. Uh, it is a daily view. You can move across dates. You can choose to go to particular dates using the date picker. Uh, you can, at any point of time, click on today to come back to the particular day. Uh, and there is also uh, multiple columns here which provide uh, detailed information on the appointment. For example, here. Uh, you have the patient name, the ID, uh, uh, the details of when the appointment is scheduled for, uh, the speciality, uh, the uh, service and the service appointment types if applicable, the status of the appointment, um, some other information uh, that is applicable to the appointment. We can also print the list view. Uh, so there is a print button here which will help you to print uh, the particular appointment view. So uh, this is in brief about the list view. The calendar view, if you see here, uh, is present here uh, as a small button. Uh, now this is configurable. Uh, if an implementation chooses not to have the calendar view, they can turn it off. You can find more information about it in the implementer's guide. So when I click on calendar, I'm, taking, I'm taken to a calendar view. Uh, I can similarly move across days. Uh, I can use a date picker. I can click on today to come back to today. Uh, and uh, this is how it looks. And let me also quickly cover the summary, which is the summary weekly summary view, um, which is a snapshot of the entire week. Uh, by default, it always comes to uh, the, week, the current week with today being highlighted. So, um, you would have the different services uh, as different rows here. Uh, for example, diabetes clinic um, uh, was the service we had created in the earlier video. Uh, right now, there are no appointments scheduled for the entire week. So that, that's why you do not see any numbers there. But say, for example, let's take ECG test. So there were two appointments for it on the 4th of December. And there are two more, uh, say, uh, on the 7th of December. Uh, it also gives you, as of the previous days, what appointments were missed. So here, for OT, um, two appointments were actually scheduled uh, in the OT, but one of them was missed. Uh, clicking on any of these numbers basically takes you to the list view to list those two appointments or the, uh, the list of appointments that are valid for that uh, uh, particular um, week. Right? Uh, so... That was about the, uh, week, the different views, the list view, calendar view, and the uh, weekly summary view. Let's now see uh, how to create an appointment. So let's uh, first look at the list view. So on the list view, we have a button called as add new appointment. Clicking on that opens a small pane like this. Uh, so here I'll have to provide some mandatory details to book an appointment. Uh, one has to be the patient and the other the service. Uh, and of course, the date and time for the appointment. So every other detail is non-mandatory, but it is useful to have those details um, otherwise. Say I book an appointment for a patient called a test patient. Um, I'm going to book an appointment for a diabetic clinic uh, for uh, an initial assessment. 
So the moment you do that, you would see that some other details like the location gets auto populated. This comes from the service definition uh, that we had defined earlier. We can assign a provider. Uh, say I want to assign this to Dr. Varsha Kumari and um, I'm going to book this appointment for the 7th of December and I'm going to book it on between 3 to 3.30 p.m. So this suggestion that we get here uh, as a drop down basically also comes from the service definition. Um, so uh, it will suggest this based on uh, the availability of the service and uh, when uh, across what days the service is available and in those days, what are the times on which it is available. Say if I choose some other date, say something like a Wednesday, uh, it will warn me saying that uh, this date is chosen, the date that is chosen is outside the availability of the service. Uh, this is just to indicate to the user that they're booking an appointment outside of when the service is actually available. Uh, this is but a soft validation. It will not stop the user from booking an appointment, but will just indicate to the user that um, they're doing so. Uh, okay, so let me book an appointment uh, for at 4 o'clock. If you see the end time got populated to 4.30, uh, this comes from this duration of 30 minutes that we have set for an initial assessment. Uh, I can choose to edit it. I can make it uh, 45 if required. Uh, once I do that um, and I click on save, um, I will be... Uh, able to see this appointment here uh, for whom I booked. Uh, so if you see here for our patient uh, called test patient, uh, we have an appointment between 4 to 4.45 for provider Varsha Kumari. Um, the same thing, I can go to a calendar view and I will see this for Dr. Varsha Kumari uh, on this particular slot. How to create an appointment from a calendar view. So the advantage of doing from a calendar view is that uh, the moment you click on a slot, it will automatically pick all this information of the date, uh, the start time, the end time, and other things. And if it was for a particular provider, then it would have picked the provider context as well. So for example, let's now try and book an appointment for um, the same patient as that's on the screen and I book it for uh, a diabetic clinic. And if you see the validations kick in because um, I'm trying to schedule it um, on, a, on a particular day uh, on Thursday where it, these timings are outside the range of the, um, the service. Say for example, I give about 4 p.m. then it'll allow me because uh, we had said that uh, on Thursdays the appointments would be available. Uh, between 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So once I uh, said that, I'll be I'll no longer see those warnings. Uh, all right. Now, but I'm on, what I'm going to do now is but create an overlapping appointment for the patient at 11 o'clock, right? And save this. Um, a pause it no. Let's also see how uh, creating an appointment from a calendar looks. Uh, for example, let me go to uh, 8th of December. Currently, there are no appointments uh, slotted for this day. Uh, here, when I click on any uh, space or any slot on the calendar, uh, immediately a panel opens up, uh, the add new appointment panel, and I would be seeing uh, the context of the slot here. So it will automatically pick up the date the start time and the end time from this uh, slot. Uh, but I still have to enter some information uh, about the patient uh, against whom I want to book the appointment. Say I book uh, an appointment for a diabetes clinic uh, for a follow-up assessment um, with say Dr. Varsha Kumari. And I, so if you see here, some validations have kicked in. So since 8 December happens to be a Friday, 
and on Thursdays and Fridays, this particular diabetes clinic is available only between uh, 3 p.m. to um, uh, 6 p.m. So it will just warn the user as to uh, that these services, this service timings are outside of what is defined. Uh, I can either choose to continue with this or edit it. Say I go ahead and make it 4.30 or 4.10 and uh, it will pick up this, automatically pick up this 10 minute gap uh, from the uh, duration of the follow-up assessment. And I save it. If you see now, I have uh, on particular day of 8 December, I have Dr. Varsha Kumari who has an appointment uh, for this patient at 4.10. Uh, let's now create another appointment. Uh, for the same patient, for another service, uh, say we are scheduling the patient for an ECG test um, in OPD1 under another doctor uh, at the same time, right? Uh, when I try to do that, um, I get this warning. Uh, which basically, whenever there are overlapping appointments for a patient, it will warn the user saying that this patient already has an appointment in this time. So uh, would you like to edit this or proceed ahead? So uh, the user can either proceed uh, because it might be a need that uh, you want to create overlapping appointments or it could be that uh, you would want to edit it and it was a mistake. So in this case, I'm gonna go back to edit uh, I'm going to move this to another time. Say I'm going to move it uh, at 5 o'clock. Uh, so now the appointment is between 5 p.m. to 5.20. Uh, another thing I would like to point out is this, uh, which is the slots information. So when we were talking about creating a services, we defined duration and max load for the service. So now that information is used here in order to display uh, these uh, available slots information. So um, this basically gives uh, the user an indication as to uh, how many slots are available to be booked. Uh, this doesn't stop the user from overbooking, but is more of an indication. To know more about how to how these calculations of uh, slots is done, you can uh, refer to the uh, user and the implementation guide on how uh, booking. So I'm now going to save this. If you see now, I did not get that uh, conflicting appointment message anymore because I moved it out. Um, so this is how uh, the calendar would look when there are different appointments on uh, the same day for different providers. Uh, uh, one thing slightly different from the list view is that um, when you click on an appointment, you would the actions would come as a pop-up. Uh, so here you would be able to perform the same actions that you did on the list view. Um, the last thing that I would like to cover as part of this uh, video would be the filters here. Let's go to the list view. And if you see, there is a small button here called as filter. Uh, the filter, uh, if you click on it, it will open up a pane here um, on the left. And you have three fields across which you can filter the appointments. Uh, there is a field for which you can uh, filter it for the specialty service or the service appointment type. There is a provider where you could pro filter the appointments for a particular provider. Uh, and you have appointment status that where you can filter out uh, appointments of a particular status. Uh, and it's also possible that you could use a combination of all of this to filter uh, out some appointments that you're specifically looking out for. Uh, for example, let's look at um, on this particular page, I'm going to filter out appointments uh, which are for cardiology. So the moment I start typing cardiology, uh, this option shows up. I can take this and say apply filter. So if you see now only two appointments uh, for cardiology show up, uh, I can uh, reset the filter. And now I want to look at only those appointments which are for diabetes. So I can click on diabetes and apply a filter. So only those appointments that are for diabetes uh, show up here. Um, I can, um, so this field, uh, what is to be noted is that works for specialty, service or service appointment type. You can search any of those three and you'll be able to do it. For example, if I search for something like initial assessment also, I'll be able to search for it in the field. Um, let's reset the filter. Let's now um, 
look at only uh, one provider say i want to filter this for only for dr yogesh kumar i'll be able to do that then this gets filtered for that particular provider i can also filter for a particular status say i want to look at only completed appointments so i see only those appointments which have been completed right um i can move up so if once the filter is applied it stays applied even if i go to the calendar view so if you see uh, only that appointment uh, which is there on the list view shows up here and the filter stays applied uh, a way of knowing if a filter is applied or not is there's a small blue indication here saying that a filter has been applied so you can click on it and reset it to come back to the uh, original view so that's how filters work going back to the list view uh we have couple of other things here uh particularly this field here this is called as the patient search uh so patient search is meant for um singling out those appointments for a particular patient say i am interested in looking at only those appointments for a test patient uh so i can type that here and only those appointments for a uh, test patient will show up it will pull out all the past and the upcoming appointments for a patient uh, so all the appointments across 8 december until 13 december uh, all those will show up along with their information of status and everything else that you would see on the list view uh, the same actions that you would perform on the list view can be performed here checking in complete cancel as as applicable you will be able to do all these actions um Uh, please note that this is not available on the calendar view so if you want to search for a particular patient you will have to come to the list view and use this search field to look for a patient uh, you can either look for a patient using the name or the id uh, so the field allows both and once you done the requisite action say i'm going to check in this patient i can check this in and uh, once i'm done with that action i can Uh, reset search and i'll come back to uh, the earlier view where i was in so that's how patient search works it's also possible to print the um, uh, search uh, search page for example i want to i want a list of all the appointments for this particular patient so i search for the patient and click on print so i can print this for reference all right um, so that brings us to the end of the second part of the video where we discussed about uh, creating appointments editing appointments and viewing them across different views of list view calendar view how to apply filters and how to search for patients uh, if you want more information here are some links uh, you can refer to our documentation on wiki uh, you will find all this information categorized under the user feature and the implementer guide you can play around with this application uh, using these demo links um you can also uh, post your questions or doubts that you have on these forums uh, you can reach out to us on open mrs talk you can ping us on the community channel on slack um thank you